Welcome to Kids Cove News with iCampus Kids. Miss Ashley and I are so very excited that you have joined us today. You may have remembered that it is Donut Day in Kids Cove. It is. I hope you were able to order donuts to enjoy during iCampus Kids. Look at our special iCampus Kids donuts. Are these not just the best? They are. They look amazing and they taste great. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could share these with you while you yes. were watching? Yes, I wish we could. That would be so awesome. You know, boys and girls, next week is Bring a Friend Day, and we want you and your friend to dress like twins. It is going to be such a fun day. If you can come in person and bring a friend, then just dress alike and we will have so much fun. Yes, you're right. But if you live too far away or you can't be in person, you can still participate and invite a friend to watch iCampus Kids with you. Dress alike while you enjoy all the fun online. Miss Ashley, will you be my twin next week? <laughs> I will, Miss Shelly. We're <laughs> twins every day on iCampus Kids. Oh, you are so right. Well, boys and girls, grab your Bibles and let's get ready to worship together. That's, That's a wrap, wrap for Kids Cove, Cove News with iCampus Kids. Kids. See you soon. Hello, iCampus Kids friends. My name is Yancey. I have been waiting all week for this moment to sing with you guys and give praise to our amazing God. I want you to get on your feet wherever you are. Get ready to sing. I wrote this song about some of my favorite Bible characters in the Bible, and I want you to get ready to sing this together. Let's choose to walk in obedience and run the race God has for us. God speaks all the time. We can hear him if we try. Are you listening? Oh, are you listening? God leads every day. He doesn't stop or change. Will you follow? Oh, will you follow? Because if there's a start and finish line, I'm going to run my race to win. Because I'm my champion. Step by step, I'm running, my race is not finished yet. When God speaks, I want to listen, walk in obedience. Ready, set, go, ready, set, go, ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. All right, you sing it with me. God speaks all the time. We can hear him every try. Are you listening? Oh, are you listening? God leads every day. He doesn't stop or change. Will you follow? Yes, will you follow? Because if there's a start and finish line, I'm going to run my race to win. Because I'm marching. Such a time as this I wanna be like the twelve disciples Who followed him And ready, set, go Ready, set, go I wanna be brave Like David When Goliath fell Like when Hannah Gave a son Samuel I wanna be like Peter A rock where God can build Say it with me Ready, set, go Ready, set, go Abraham and Sarah believed like the widow and gave Elijah food to eat. I wanna sing praise like Paul and Silas in the jail. And ready, set, go, ready, set, go.
Welcome to iCampus Kids. I'm Miss JJ, your Bible teacher, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. The Bible is God's Word. God gave people exactly the right words to write so we could know everything we need to know about Him and everything we need to know about ourselves. So far, we have learned that God created everything for His glory. God created men and women to be a special part of His creation. We learned that people sin against God. People rebel against God. God scattered the people throughout the earth by mixing up their languages. God knew all of that was going to happen, and He had a plan to rescue His people. That's what we're going to start learning about today. We're going to play, Why Should I? I'm going to list some things to do. You try to guess what the goal is of doing those things. Why you should do those things. Are you ready? Why should I? Get dressed. Eat some breakfast. Pack your lunch. Grab your backpack. Can you guess why you should do those things? What would you be getting ready to do? You would be going to school. Next one. Why should I? Brush your teeth. Put on your pajamas. Read a book. Why should I? You would be getting ready for bed. This one is a little bit harder. Get your swimsuit and towel. Get the gift off the table. Get in the car. Why should I? You would be going to a swim party. Last one. Wash your hands. Get something to drink. Sit down at the table. Why should I? You would be getting ready to eat something. Great job playing Why Should I? How many of them did you guess correctly? Sometimes we know why we need to do things. Sometimes we know what will probably happen next. But we don't always know what is going to happen. Sometimes it can be tempting to want to know the future, to want to know what is going to happen. But instead of getting to know what is going to happen, we get to know who is in control of what happens. That is our big question for the next few weeks. Who is in control of everything? We are going to learn that God is in control of everything. God has a plan for everyone. We can obey God knowing that He knows what will happen and He knows what is best for us. We will see an example of that in our passage today. We're going to read from the book of Genesis. Genesis is the first book in the Old Testament and is a book of the law. Genesis records true things that really happened with real people. I'm going to summarize some of the events from Genesis 12 through 20. You can read all of those chapters on your own if you want to know all the details. We're going to read about God, about a man named Abram, also known as Abraham, and about Abram's wife, Sarai, also known as Sarah. When I'm reading or telling about God, stand up. When I'm reading or telling about Abram, sit down. When I'm reading or telling about Sarai, pretend to sit in a chair. Are you ready? Abram and his wife, Sarai, were part of Noah's family who had spread out on the earth after the great flood. Listen to Genesis 12, verses one through five. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country your people and your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you. I will put a curse on anyone who puts a curse on you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. So Abram went just as the Lord had told him. Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, and his nephew, Lot. They took all the people and possessions they had acquired in Haran. They started out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Chapter 15, verse 1 records, Sometime later, Abram had a vision. The Lord said to him, Abram, do not be afraid. I am like a shield to you. I am your very great reward. And verses five through eight record, the Lord took Abram outside and said, 
Look up in the sky. Count the stars if you can. Then he said to him, That's how many children will be born into your family. Abram believed the Lord. The Lord was pleased with Abram because he believed. So Abram's faith made him right with the Lord. He also said to Abram, I am the Lord. I brought you out of Ur in the land of Babylon. I will give you this land to have as your very own. But Abram said, Lord and King, how can I know I will have this land as my own? Chapter 15 goes on to record how God showed Abram that he would keep his covenant or promise. One night while Abram slept, God told him what would happen in the future. He said Abram's family would be slaves in another country for 400 years. Then God would judge that nation and bless Abram's family. But first, Abram would live a long, peaceful life. A smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the animals Abram had presented to God, showing that God would be responsible for keeping his promise. Listen to what happened later, recorded in chapter 17, verses 1 through 8. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him. He said, I am the mighty God. Walk faithfully with me. Live in a way that pleases me. I will now act on my covenant between me and you. I will greatly increase the number of your children after you. Abram fell with his face to the ground. God said to him, This is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. You will not be called Abram anymore. Your name will be Abraham, because I have made you a father of many nations. I will greatly increase the number of your children after you. Nations and kings will come from you. I will make my covenant with you last forever. It will be between me and you and your family after you for all time to come. I will be your God, and I will be the God of your family after you. You are now living in Canaan as an outsider, but I will give you the whole land of Canaan. You will own it forever, and so will all your family after you and I will be their God. And verses 15, 16, and 19 record, God also said to Abraham, do not continue to call your wife by the name Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will give her my blessing. You can be sure that I will give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of all nations. Kings of nations will come from her and you will name her son Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him. That covenant will last forever. It will be for Isaac and his family after him. God promised Abraham several things. He promised to make Abraham into a great nation and to bless him. Abraham's name would be great and he would be a blessing to others. God would bless those who bless Abraham and curse those who curse Abraham. All the nations of the earth would be blessed because of Abraham. All the nations. Wow. God was putting into place his rescue plan. God chose Abraham and his family to have a special relationship with him. And one day, the rescuer God had promised to Adam and Eve would come from Abraham's family. What incredible promises. To review the details of what happened, we're going to play, Who Did That? To play, Who Did That? I'm going to say something that might have happened in the passage. You, show me who did it by doing the correct motion. If the answer is God, stand up straight. If the answer is Abraham, sit down. If the answer is Sarah, pretend to sit in a chair. If what I say did not happen in this passage at all, make a big letter X. Who made the covenant, the promise? Stand up straight, that was God. God made the covenant. God promised Abraham several things. God had the power and the authority to make the promise and make it happen. Who had his or her name changed? Sit down and pretend to sit in a chair. Both Abraham and Sarah had their names changed. Abraham used to be Abram. Sarah used to be Sarai. But God changed their names to match what he was going to do in their lives. Who ate the fruit from the tree? 
Make a big X, that did not happen in our passage today. To whom did God say, Go from your country, your people, and your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. Sit down, that was Abraham. God told Abraham to go, and Abraham obeyed. Who made the ark? Make a big X, that did not happen in our passage today. Who was going to give birth to a boy named Isaac? Pretend to sit in a chair, that was Sarah. Who was in control of everything? Stand up, God was in control of everything. God was in control of all the details of their lives. Great job playing, who did that? God told Abraham what to do and Abraham obeyed, even though God didn't tell Abraham all the details of what was going to happen. God is in control of everything and wants what is best for us. We can follow God even when we don't understand all of his plan. God is faithful. God is good. God promised to bless all the world through Abraham. God sent Jesus from his home in heaven to be born on earth into Abraham's family. Through Jesus, all the nations of the earth are blessed because Jesus saves people from their sins. And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder, the time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our question be today? It landed on yellow. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, is a covenant the same thing as a promise? We can define a covenant as a formal and serious agreement or promise. So we can think of a covenant as a promise that is even more serious and more formal. Covenants are promises, but not all promises are covenants. When we read about God making a covenant in the Bible, we can know it was something special. But we should take all of God's word seriously. Whatever God says he will do, he will do. Whether it is called a statement, a promise, or a covenant, we can count on God's word because it is truth. God made a covenant with Abraham. He promised to give Abraham land and to make him into a great nation. All the nations of the earth would be blessed because of Abraham. God kept his promises to Abraham and God will keep his promises to us. We can follow God knowing he is in control and he knows what is best for us. God is faithful. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you for your promises. Please help us to learn more about them. Thank you for your faithfulness. Please help us to trust you. You are incredible and all powerful. Help us to follow you. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Well, sweet friends, I've loved studying God's word with you today. There's so much more for us to learn together. Be sure to join me next time on iCampus Kids. My name is Camp Sergeant Master B, and I will make you say, uh, nah, 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 nah. Recruits, I need you to stand at attention. Well done. When I say attention, I need you to stand up as quick as you can and stand firm. Ready? Attention! Well done. You are on your way to being great recruits. Attention! All right, it's time to work on your marching. Are you ready? Now you can answer by saying, sir, yes, sir. Are you ready? All right, let's march. Follow me. Lift, 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 right, lift, 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 right, lift. Good job, recruits, at ease. All right, go ahead and take your seats. Now, a promise is something or a particular thing that a person says they will do. Have you ever promised something? Let's think about that. Have you ever promised your parents that you will clean your room? Okay, have you ever promised something and you did not do it? Sir, yes sir. Now a covenant is a promise and God made a covenant to Abraham to bless all the world through Abraham, to make his family numerous and to give victory over enemies and blessing to the, all the earth through Abraham's family. That's an exciting promise and God's promises are true. 
One of my favorite games to play is tug of war. And the object is to pull the end of the rope so that the other person pulls to your side. Now you are trying to have control of the rope. And when we are going through life, we need to realize that when we let go of the rope and give control to God, he will guide us. God's promises are true and we can trust him. Let go of the rope and give him control. I'm Camp Sergeant Master B, and I will make you say, nah, 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 nah. I'll see you soon. Dismissed. Hey guys, welcome back to iCampus Kids. We had the best time worshiping with Yancey and learning about our Bible lesson with Miss JJ. Today, Miss Ashley, our activity gets everyone up out of their seat. All right. So everybody stand up. This activity has two parts. That's right, Miss Shelley. In today's activity, we have these commands. And the first part is you have to guess which one we are going to do first. And then the second part is you actually have to do that command. Are you ready? <gasps> All right. So here are our commands today. All right, you ready? Pick the first one. Hop like a frog. That's our first one. Ooh. Okay, let's do it. Hop like a frog, everybody. <laughs> Great job, you guys. Good Great hopping. job. All right, here is our next one. Are you ready? Ooh, this is a good one. All right, do a silly dance for 10 seconds. Okay. All right. Let's count down. 10, 9, 9 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. one. Great job, good guys. Good job. All right, Michelle, your turn. All right, here's one. Let's pretend to climb a ladder. Ooh. Are you ready? Great job. Let's go. Climb the ladder. Just All right. like Bobcat. That's what I feel like. <laughs> Climb the ladder. Yes. Good job. All right. We have two more. Are you ready? All right. Yes. Crawl like a bear. Ooh. On all fours. Okay, all right. guys. See if you can crawl like a bear. Great job, guys. All right. Last one, right. Miss Shelley. One more. Here it is. Put your hand on your head and spin around. Ooh. You guys can do you that. You can do that. Don't get too dizzy. Yeah, that's great. Great job today, everyone. Now for our last command. We want you to give a high five. All right. Woo! Great job, guys. You all did a great job guessing today and following instructions. You know, we can do our very best at guessing what's going to happen in the future, mm -hmm. but we can't know for sure. Only God knows the future, and God is in control of everything in heaven and on earth. So we can trust God that His plan is for His glory and our good. That is right, Miss Ashley. You know, boys and girls, it's easy to get worried about what's going to happen next, especially when so many crazy things are happening in the world around us, maybe even in our own family. But we know that what we read in the Bible is real and it is true. And we can trust every word in the Bible. And the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, submit your requests to God. We can know and trust that God hears us when we pray. That's right, Miss Shelley. God knows just what you need, and He knows everything that is going to happen before it even happens. We can trust God. Boys and girls, try this activity at home with your brother or sister or a friend. All you need is some paper like this and think of some commands that would be fun for you to do together. We had so much fun today trying to guess what we were going to do and then following instructions. Before we go today, let's close with one more song of worship with Yancey. See, See you, you next week on, on iCampus Kids. Kids. I want to remind you today that we serve a big God. He is so worthy of our praise, and your praise matters to God. Don't ever forget that. The Bible tells us in Psalms, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Let's choose right now to sing and lift up his name and celebrate all he has done. Sing this with me. To water you turned into wine And opened the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you And into 
the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's no one like you Cause our God is greater Our God is stronger Shout of praise, our God is so 